is the Marguerite Peterson Tarot. Um, this is the, I believe this is the first edition, this is the English edition. Agium Urania. And, um, well, maybe this isn't the first. It says copyright 2004 and 2014. Um, so, um, I believe this was the first major release of it. I got it this year. Um, I believe there will be another. It will be, it's still in print somewhat, from what I can tell. Um, it's sort of, I think it's going towards sort of a, a new, a new printing of it. Let's look it up. There's the box. Here's the book. The book is um, has a color front, back, a little white book. There's a little um, bit written by Louisa Francia within the Labyrinth of Tarot. Introduction by the author. And then here are like little, I guess little blurbs about the major arcana. And then the court cards, a little bit about those. So this is a 78 page book, interesting number, 78, year I was born, but also the number of, of cards in a tarot deck. Um, so here are the cards, they are larger than most decks, which I like, I love larger decks, I really do sort of gravitate towards them, and um, the back is not really reversible. There. Not really reversible, but if someone's not paying attention, it kind of is. The edges are rounded, here, um, smooth, and the finish is um, slick. They slide very nicely. You could slide out of your hands. <coughs> but let's look at the cards. This is the order in which they came. And I think my favorite card of this deck is the Fool, because um, it's almost like this sphere floating in, in the abyss. And you have the figure with the foot very delicately, almost falling off a cliff, but there's like an, a bird pulling back. A different take on it. This is, uh, instead of Magician, it's Magic. Um, it's kind of an interesting card. I, to be honest, I originally did not like this deck. I did not want to buy it um, when it first came out. I remember when it came out, I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't like that. It's um, not my, it doesn't seem like it, it would work for me. But the more and more I've looked at tarot decks, the more I have gravitated towards more abstract art in the tarot because you can really interpret it and make it personal um, and really draw your own conclusions from it because the one thing with studying the tarot is each deck is its own sort of person and some of the cards do not interpret like classical tarot um, as much as you might want to force a meaning on something depending on the deck you cannot do that. It just won't let you say like, oh, this the tower, it's, you know, beware, destruction. Um, you know, you have a choice, but this choice is probably, the choice you're going to make is probably going to be the worst thing you ever do. It's going to impact you so, so much. Um, you know, you can do your own thing with the tarot. And that's what I think appeals to a lot of people. 
So here's uh, the, the one is magic. This is the high priestess. The empress. See, these are these are not traditional. Um, lots of symbolism in the in the depiction. The emperor, extremely abstract. Another a hero faint. Dark, brooding. Again, what in the world? You know, you can bring so much to the interpretation of this. And I, I really appreciate, um, you know, decks that are, you know, the artist has really put something in there, and that's what makes this deck so special. So the, ch the, chari the chariot tests a take on card seven. We have the, t they're like two cats. Justice, we have a vague, there's some, this would, uh, to be honest, freak me out if I saw this image in the sky of like the head, the arm, the scales, sort of almost like I'm being judged. And even on camera, this looks like it's like a, a stormy sky with, if a figure popped out of it, I would, and my jaw would drop. The crone. Mm -hmm. The wheel of life. This is ten. Strength. Not so much an abstract card, but is it a lion? Some sort of beast? Trial instead of the hangman. A more apt depiction of a hanged man, classical depiction of the hanged man, but we have these two tugging at the sort of the good angel, the bad angel. Sort of a, a bird, a phoenix down here. Your face is here. Interesting card. Very different than the other abstract cards, though. There's um, the death card. Um, so this thinks makes me think of death as like not the the end all death is you become more part of the universe you be, you go back to the to what you were before you were born like you know there's the school of thought where you know don't be scared of death because what was you were there before birth so don't be scared it's okay mediatrix again one of those sort of newer cards. Interesting, sort of a balance card of light and dark with the rainbow separating them. Devil. We have this sort of diamond crystal shape. An eye, eyes poking out. You know, of course, beware of, of earthly things that that weigh you down and tie you down like um, I think for a lot of people it's like the need to keep buying things over and over again the need to, to spend your money um, that's a problem the tower oh, we have sort of a tower striking um, a darker card of course um Abstract, but yet you can still see the tower. You can still see it's being struck from the right to the left, which is typical. The star, very celestial. The moon, look at how very intentional this card is. We have this subconscious mind here. Crab is actually crawling out onto the shore. We have a dog lying down, a dog howling. Two people, we have a bound woman there, the face there, the moon, the path leading off into the distance. 
a traditional meaning of the card updated it's it, that's this is an amazing card um, I wish the whole deck was more it was as rich as this card beautiful card I love the moon cards in a lot of decks this one's good the Sun here we have sort of a, a burst and then color and not much else, very, very abstract. Renewal is card 20. And the world, here we have, we do have sort of that sort of spiral, almost like a, um, a hurricane on a map. And then we go into the um, minor arcana we have flames feathers coins and cups so flames would be equivalent to wands we'll go through these fairly quickly Looks like some gold leaf was used there in the original art. I always wonder where is the original art that the artist worked with? Where where do they keep it? Do they have it? Is it a museum? Was it destroyed? Did they reuse it? And all of these cards have this sort of grayish with a white line border. Kind of makes it a little classy, very artsy. I have a flame. We have some people depicted. Six of flames. I have to say that the card sock is thinner than, than a lot of them, so they, they're very flexible cards. But yet still very... Um, they might be thinner and flexible than most, probably because the size of them, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like it lends itself to being terribly thick. Eight of Flames. Looks like a cheetah. Nine of Flames. Or Nine of Wands. Ten of Wands. Here we have some sort of angel wings or bird wings. And here, now this is where we have Mother of Flames, Father of Flames, Son of... Daughter of Flames, and Son of Flames. So... I guess technically it'd be this way. We have Daughter of Flames, Son of Flames, Mother of Flames, Father of Flames. Ah, oh, and then we have Feathers. I'm kind of partial to, um, peacock feathers because I grew up with my great grandfather raising peacocks and I always thought that the peacock feathers were amazing jewels but the birds are, are relatively stupid <laughs> it's just their feathers that are pretty but to go up behind one one's fanning out go up behind it and scare it it's the funniest thing um, so I, I still actually have some of the feathers that I you know, from like the early 90s that I got from the from the peacocks, but they were the stupidest birds, just like turkeys. They're very smart. But I love that card, it's very pretty. Two of feathers. And this would be swords, as of uh, the air. Three. And these cards do feel very airy. Hmm. Almost like you're spinning around. Eight of feathers. 
nine. I feel this, of course, we're getting darker, of course. And the colors really show that. So this tells me the artist, she's familiar with the tarot. She's familiar with the feeling of the tarot. And I'm going to switch these around. You have the Daughter of Feathers. Son of Feathers. Mother of Feathers. Father of Feathers. Now we have coins. Ace. Two. Very much traditional. Looks like a footprint. Footprint. Ooh, three. Ooh, five of coins. Feet in hand, six of coins. Ooh, that's a very pretty card. Seven of coins. Reminds me of cave art. Lasco, maybe? Lasco cave art. I'm kind of partial to Lasco. Um, flower buds. Some sort of birch leaf. Nine. Oh, we have a labyrinth. Now, the traditional labyrinth was on the floor of cathedrals, and pilgrims would crawl on their knees um, till their knees were sometimes bloody um, as sort of a, um, something to do um, in, the, in the cathedral. And I've seen several cathedrals, I mean several, um, several labyrinths, uh, one in a forest, um, I think uh, Chartres Cathedral in France, in Chartres, France, has one, um, and they are, they are definitely interesting to think that people scrape their knees to crawl around this labyrinth. Daughter of Coins. Ooh, Father of Coins. These figures almost look like they're pre-Columbian. And then this is the last suit. Uh, here we, we clearly have sort of a lotus blossom. And cups, of course, is associated with water. Looks like an oyster with a pearl. Beautiful seascape. Waves coming in. There's that pre-Columbian almost. It almost looks like Nepalese or Indian figures. Yes, definitely. It looks like a Buddha figure. Anyway. So, to be honest, I don't think I could read with this deck. Um, I don't feel confident enough to read with this deck. I just don't. Um, if it was... If it gave me more clues, especially with the Minor Arcana, maybe, but... I don't see myself reading with this. I just, I just can't do it. I love the artwork though. It's very nice. It's a very nice deck. Um, I'm glad I, I purchased it. And it was, it's because it's. I guess it's becoming out of print. I think I paid forty dollars for it to be on. And yeah, I think it was forty dollars. Maybe it was almost forty. Um, but um, a couple of things. 
This is my original tarot cloth that I ordered, um, wow, probably 2000, 2000, 2001, um, when I didn't have that many tarot decks. And I, I, I love this, this pattern, this sort of Celtic pattern on this. The other thing is I've changed the name of my channel to Tarot Oculus instead of Tarot Reviews. Um, Tarot Reviews was me being kind of generic, but not, not necessarily certain of what I wanted to call my channel. But as of today, I have over 250 subscribers, and I wanted to make it more me. And so I played around with um, using my name as an anagram. But yesterday when I was driving home um, from work, the gym, um, Oculus, the word Oculus came into mind. And I think of the, uh, the Pantheon and the Oculus, or the Oculus as the eye looking at tarot and just talking about it. So Tarot Oculus is the channel's name, um, but I'm still Johnny. So, but Tarot Oculus makes more sense to me instead of Tarot Reviews because, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm doing the best at reviewing tarot. My main goal with the channel was to just talk about tarot cards that I buy and then just uh, go through the cards because uh, there was, I'd look for tarot cards and I wouldn't be able to see the whole deck before I bought it. And that was my main reason for making this channel. But... Um, one of the things that I am doing, you know, I'm doing more now that I'm running out of decks to talk about is talk about the cards to help me learn them, as well as my own experiences with the tarot. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. And this is the Marguerite Peterson Tarot by A.G.M. Urania. Still in print, somewhat. I think they're coming out with the the newer one. Um, but again, as always, I appreciate you watching and subscribing. Um, I'm not making money off this channel. Um, I don't expect I will, but it's something I enjoy doing. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.